Hey, knock on freaks. Welcome to my backyard. Thought it'd be a cool night. I got uh, the last bits of my elk backstrap right here, grilling for the family. We're out shooting tonight. So I'm gonna grill and then we're gonna do what I do and what we do in my backyard all the time in the summer. We throw food on and we shoot bows. And I'm gonna talk to you about a couple cool topics I wanna talk with you about. And then, obviously, you guys are going to be able to shoot some questions through to Little Dud. But uh, this is my new favorite friend. We've got this thing set. We're going to put this on, and we're going to just set the timer for 20 minutes. We're going to talk archery, shoot bows, and this will be done. Nothing like elk on. You know those little inside tenderloins that are just the best and they're small and you don't want to overcook them? I just put those on some shish kebabs. So Tonight we're going to be talking, I'm going to show you some differences in releases and I'm also going to talk with you about shooting angles and then we're going to dive into any other subjects that you guys may have. Um, we're actually happy that Brady Ellison made it through. Congrats, Brady. It sucked that you have to shoot against Jake, but so happy that you're one step closer to a gold medal. And we also have a new podcast. will be up tomorrow. Throw some veggies on there. And that's going to be it. So, step over here to my little dojo I made for you. It's pretty much my spot. Little Dud's gonna come around so the sun isn't too bad. But, uh, I thought the first thing that we could talk about tonight is gonna be, uh, release aids. Because an important part of every archer is obviously gonna be the release. So, I've got several different releases here. I've got a hinge release, I've got an evolution, and I've got a trigger release. And I want to show you that even though I've got three releases, I can still get to the same exact shot no matter which release I had. And I actually had a wrist strap out here somewhere, but it ran from me. It knows that I don't really like it. But I was going to show you that even with the wrist strap, we can still make the exact same shot. But uh, really what we're looking for, when we go through our shot process, and you know, it's, uh, we can hear you babe. <laughs> Shazzy's talking wine over there with uh, Olivia, but when you grab these release aids, you really wanna make sure your hand's flat, just like that. And this is important because your hand can change your draw length so much just by how much you bend that hand. So a lot of times people start to get tight on their release, they make that fist and it actually feels like their draw length shorter. So then what happens is you end up compressing that front shoulder or having to bend that elbow in order to get into that position. So you really want to make sure your hand position is flat all the time. Now with a trigger release like this, a thumb trigger release, what I like to do is I'm going to go through my shot process and when I bring my thumb to that trigger, what you'll notice is I don't like to bring the trigger deep into my hand like this. I actually like to keep my hand straight. I like to bring my thumb to the back side of, that, uh, of the trigger and once it's in that position, I'll actually just build pressure by pulling through the shot and I don't like getting it here. What I find is when you curl your hand and a lot of people touch their thumb to their index finger, they bury that neural knob deep in their palm and they end up having to do this to make it fire. They end up having to squeeze that hand. So I'm just gonna show you a shot quick here. And uh, my bow is fresh out of the case from Florida. I'll just shoot that black bear. So I'll draw back. I'm going to anchor 
I'm going to acquire my sight looking through my peep. And from there, I'm going to bring my thumb to that trigger and it's going to stay in that same place as I pull through using my back muscles, okay? So maybe come in tight H right to my hand and uh, just come in real tight so that they can see right where my thumb acquires that trigger and then you can see how I never have to move my thumb to pull through that shot. Anchor, peep, thumb to the trigger, pulling. You can see naturally when that trigger trips, your hand is gonna compress. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot a hinge release, okay? I haven't even shot this, I don't even know how fast or slow this is set. Now when I shoot a hinge release, I shoot it a slightly different. I actually like to relax my index finger to shoot through this release. So I'll pull, I'll anchor, and I'll actually relax my index finger and let that release pivot around my middle finger. Okay, so here we go with the hinge release. I'm anchored, now I'm going to relax my index finger and allow the release to pivot around the middle finger. Same shot, okay? So now, we're going to shoot the Carter Evolution. Carter Evolution, my favorite, and yes, I could shoot a tournament with it, yes, I could hunt with it. So this, I'm going to hold the safety, draw back, hand is in the same position, let off the safety, and then continue to utilize those same muscles to pull through until I get the exact same shot. Okay, so if you look at that bear right there, and for, for talking, that's probably about as good as I can do while talking but while talking I've literally got three arrows pretty much right in the same hole and three different releases but that right there is exactly what you're striving for you're looking for that unanticipated surprise shot regardless of which release you have now if I would have remembered that that uh, wrist strap release what I would do with that is I would actually draw that release back I would put this knuckle at the base of my earlobe and wrap my index finger all the way around the trigger just like this. Then I would relax my other fingers so that the tension of the strap and the tension of that trigger is sitting on my index finger and I would pull through the exact same way until I got that shot. Now the next thing I want to talk with you about, you can stay right there H. Um, so there's been a lot of questions on whether I like fixed pin, multi-pin sights, or single pin sights. These are actually two sights. They're Sherlock's, oldies but goodies. Um, I just love these things. So if I wanted to hunt with a single pin sight, here's my setup. I can actually just take this uh, screw out of here. This is similar to an old Sherlock Supreme. Um, I can take this set screw out right here slide my whole housing out and I can slide this whole one in or I can just interchange the ends but I can tell you that for most of the hunting I really prefer a multi-pin sight. I like to be able to if I'm in the whitetail woods or if I'm mule deer hunting or if I'm elk hunting and they're changing that distance fast I like to be able to make a quick adjustment just with my pins and not have to sit there and move that dial. For a lot of beginning archers, I can tell you that a single pin sight, although it does give you one focal point, if you don't have someone that's really coaching you through ranging and you know telling you what to set the sight on and all that stuff, or someone that knows, okay, your sight set at 20, now the animal went to 30, but you can't move your sight, how high do you have to aim? If you don't have someone with you that can do that, it can certainly, certainly get you in trouble. Are there any questions popping up? Yeah, I got a few. Brian Sheffield asks, if I go from a wrist release 
to a thumb release, do I have to change my draw length? So, in the, for the most part, no, you're not going to have to change your draw length. What you'll need to change is you'll need to change the actual length of that strap. And I wish I would have remembered where mine was because I could have showed you. And what I can do here later is I can actually post on a page. I'll show you two pictures. I'll post on the Knock on TV page. Um, I'll post two pictures, a picture with a handheld release and a picture with um, a wrist strap release. And you'll be able to see that the same person with the same bow is going to have that same fit. And you're also, if you anchor the proper way, which is with the index knuckle at the base of the earlobe and have that strap adjusted short enough so that you're able to get that finger around that trigger, you're essentially going to be in this position here, which is the exact same as this. It's the same position. It's one or the other, and I'll be able to show you that either one is going to give you the same result. Uh, Jason Kidd asks, any tips for shooting with both eyes open? I can't seem to get focused. Jason Kidd, the basketball player? <laughs> what, what was the question? Any tips for shooting with both eyes open? I can't get... I can't seem to focus. You can't seem to focus. So a lot of times what you need to start to do, and I had this problem, when I first started shooting, I had a difficult time looking through scopes when I shot 3D and not getting two images. So what I first did was I actually made a little blinder out of an old credit card. I put some electrical tape on it so it was black and I had a little clip and I would put it on my hat and have it just at an angle to where it didn't interfere with the string but acted as a blinder. It would blind my left eye. And then over time, I got to the point where I could actually slightly move that out of the way and my right eye was trained to look and see the scope and not let my left eye take over. Now, if you're left eye dominant or even just barely left eye dominant, that's gonna end up being a problem for you. One thing you can also do, and what I like to do, is you'll notice that when I shoot, I'll do this one more time for you. When I shoot, I actually like to confirm, I'll just shoot the evolution since you guys, uh, I don't know, I'll let you decide. You want this shot to be with an evolution or a knock to it? I'll let you guys decide. But what I'll tell you in the meantime is I like to be able to slightly close my left eye to confirm a perfect sight window with my right eye and then slowly open my left eye so that I can again make sure that I'm seeing that same picture but when you shoot with both eyes open you're going to gather more light and you're actually going to have a much much brighter picture. What, no. How many people said what? Well, Tim Collins said knock to it. All right. And James Willard said evolution, so 50-50. 50-50? Oh, another knock to it. Two All more. right, so it's a knock to it. Okay, so you'll notice you might have to get to where you can see my, my left eye here. But I draw back. Again, anchor first, peep second. And right now, I'll slightly close my left eye to perfectly confirm my eclipse between my peep and my scope housing. And once I have that perfect picture, I'll slightly open my left eye so that I have more light coming in. And that was a fairly weak shot, but it worked. It's still in there, but that, don't judge me on that shot. But that's pretty much it. Now... The next thing I want to talk about here, and uh, we'll have to switch positions. I wanted to talk with you guys a little bit about shot angles. Okay, this is something that I learned a lot about in field archery. Thankfully, get, we get one cloud. I learned a lot about this in field archery. So here's pretty much how shot angles work. Okay, if this is us right here in a tree stand and We've got an animal right down here, okay? Can you see that, H? We've got an animal right down here. We're in this tree stand, or we're up on the top of this hill. If you look at that total distance right there, that distance, let's just use the inches on this measuring arrow as a reference, okay? That's 34, so let's just say that's 34 yards in that line. 
However, the gravity only affects the arrow on a horizontal plane. So as you shoot horizontally, you're looking at a true distance of this that actually affects the arrow. So although this total distance here is measuring 34 yards, in all fairness, we're really looking at a true distance of maybe 11 to 12 yards. So what you want to do to learn this is, I'm going to hold this up and you guys can pause the screen. Right here is my chart, okay? This chart is something that uh, a good buddy of mine, Darren Cooper, and another good buddy of mine, Zach, this was something that we based off of math and built these charts and we'd actually memorize these charts and then we would use an inclinometer, which is this right here, and this inclinometer we would mount on the side of our rangefinders. Now this is before there was true angle compensation in rangefinders. So you would mount it perfectly horizontal like that, and as you moved to acquire your target up or down, that ball would move as well, and then you'd be able to see, okay, at this angle, I'm, it's 30 degrees. So let's just say we had a 100-yard shot uphill at 20 degrees, okay? 20-degree shot, that's telling you that you have to take 5% off of that distance. So this is a great little chart. Go ahead and when you play this video back, pause the screen, write those numbers down, and screenshot. Go on what? Or screenshot. Yeah, or screenshot that sucker. And then go on Amazon and buy, buy you one of those little inclinometers just like that. And you're going to be all set and learning how to shoot. We got any other questions flying up? Yeah, we got a few. What, ti what time are we at? Uh, there's no timer. No here. time? No. Anybody know? I don't want to. I don't want to mess up my stakes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll go through these quick. Okay, let's do it. Matt Gigure asks, "Is that T-shirt you're wearing on your website?" Yeah, this T-shirt. This is the Knock On Nation, right here. I'm kind of trying to represent all the countries. I'm favoring USA. Sorry, I'm partial to, to my boys on the team. But uh, the Under Armour part is is mine. But we do sell these. They're actually in a really cool athletic form fit and shirt. But they're at knockonarchery.com. And um, Sharon Ships International, too, if you email her at info at knockonarchery.com. <laughs> sounds like a commercial now. <laughs> All right. Let's. Um, uh, what other questions we got? I'm just going to give you a better background here. Whoop. Chris Reynolds asks, should I be able to draw back to my anchor with my eyes closed, open my eyes, and be looking through my peep, regardless if my nose touches the string or not? How important is the string on the nose? Hold on, I cut off for a point. Oh yeah. So let me. I'm going to grab these arrows quick, and I'm going to come back so I can show you this. Okay, so let's just go ahead and draw back and we'll talk about this. Because actually just today I saw yet another professional industry hunter um, at shooting at full draw and they were again not in proper form. So yeah, what I really look for, if your anchor position is correct and your draw length is correct. now. On some bows with a, with a shorter axle axle and a tighter string angle, that will actually come, your, your angle will come further back on your face. Okay, with a bow that has a longer axle axle, that string angle will be sharper. But if you anchor in the place that I talked about, which is when you grab a handheld release, it's going to create a V. That V is going to go right under your jawline, middle finger above the jawline. From the side, you're going to notice that you're pretty much right between the back of the eye and the front of the earlobe in your anchor position. Your head should be vertical, and from there, your length of your bow should be adjusted so that that string is able to touch the tip of your nose. Okay, A lot of people 
are putting their thumb behind their neck, which brings this string angle down, which means you'll be floating back here or you're gonna have to go to that angle. So I'll just show you here, quick example. Now, when I go through my normal process and I draw and I anchor, then I acquire my peep, my head straight. Now, if I anchored with my middle finger under my jaw right here, which doesn't look like much to you, but my middle finger is under my jaw instead of my index. So if I'm here, now I have to do this to acquire that string. Now, if I had my thumb behind my neck, you can see I'd have to really come down to get the tip of my nose to the string. What you want to do is utilize your loop length. For example, if you have a shorter axle to axle where the triangle at full draw is sharp, it's going to have to be slightly further back on your face so that that, that triangle touches the tip of your nose, which also means your loop will be much shorter. Now, if you have a bigger axle to axle bow where it's open like this, you'll notice that on my target bows, if you look back on my target bows, the string angle's bigger, so when my head's in a vertical position, I actually have a longer D loop so that I can maintain my anchor position in the same spot. See what we got 17 minutes in we got right. three minutes and we're gonna have some kicking food All what right. other questions we got from we have lots so you better go <laughs> okay. through them quickly kicking gear mitchell fry what release are you hunting with this year i am hunting right here with the knock to it that's it that's what i'm hunting with boom i made it i love it <laughs> and i wish we could make some more of it we are gonna have some more coming hopefully but that last batch was gone ridiculously quick. All right, Chad Snader asked what thumb release would you recommend? Thumb release right there. I'm gonna recommend the knock to it just because I'll tell you why. Here's what I really like about this release is the less fingers you have on a release, the less ability you have to change your angle this way and also this way. If you change your release angle this way in other words your rocker position you will also change how that loop is sitting in that jaw now what I really like about this release and how I had this one made was when that jaw is closed you can see that the jaw is actually set at an angle like this which channels that release rope right the D loop right to the the edge of the release casing that the loop will come out of first when it fires. So this is the one I prefer. I like it, it closes automatically. As Soon as you cock it, it's on there. This will sit on my easy hanger just like this and it's totally ready to go. All right, Mike Rouser asks, where to aim in tree stand as opposed to flat ground when range finder is giving same distance? Arrow shoot low and stand dead center on ground. Okay, well let's Let's just walk down here to this target and hopefully my Wi-Fi reaches. And I'm just going to show you something that's a really good thing for you to learn. Let's go down here. So if you want to learn, and this is what I teach Little Dud and Sharon both. If you want to learn angles, come on up close. H got to be right here by this. So if you want to learn angles either way, a good way to do it is... Come right over here over the top. If you talk about angles quartering away or quartering to, all you need to do is take an arrow and put it, imagine in a broadside exactly where the heart would sit. So the heart is gonna sit right here. So then what you need to do is if you just take your arrow and you pivot it, you can show exactly your entrance point at any angle, forward or back because essentially your arrow has to pass through this point regardless of entrance or exit. So you can, by doing this, you really start to learn angles. Now, the same is true if you take this apart, the same is true for this way. If you took this, and I guess we can do it just like this. So you look here about Right here in the center is where you're gonna want, right? Here's the heart. Let's just say that's the heart. Put your arrow there, 
and just pivot. And this shows you exactly where you would have to aim depending on your angle. So you can see, if you're wanting to hit right here at the center point of mass, if you were shooting almost straight down, you're having to go through above the scapula. So getting an arrow, putting it on the heart, pivoting is a great way, or do it also here. Great way to learn angles. Let's do one more. And uh, I promise you guys, this, I love podcasting, but this is definitely the way to go for me. Um, you ask a question, I got an answer, I can guarantee you. And this is the direction that I'm going to be going is one-on-one -on -one with all of you because this is why I do it. I want to help you guys. I want all of you to be better. So give me one more question, LD, and we'll go check these stakes out. All right, this is the first one I got. Matt King asks, how many shots should I be shooting per practice season? Should I shoot until I can no longer hold up full draw comfortably? <laughs> okay, I re I'm a firm believer in if you're shooting good, then shoot. If you're not shooting good, then don't imprint bad habits. I just really like to go out, you know, we shoot as a family. We might shoot 30 minutes. We put some food on, we shoot a little bit. Now, if I'm shooting with my buddies, um, last time Joe and I shot in Chicago, we shot for three to four hours. We just shot and shot and shot. But I can tell you that if I'm out here training, okay, if I'm training, I really like to shoot three arrows at a time, focus on three good shots, and pull. If I'm really focusing on building strength and stamina, I'll shoot anywhere from six to 12 arrows per end. But again, make sure you're not imprinting poor habits. You gotta make sure you're making good shots. Don't, don't reinforce poor shots. If you're starting to get tired, that's a good time to just take a little break, walk over to your grill, Depending on your age, have a wine. Uh, so let's see how these suckers look right here. The key is, the key with this sucker, my Traeger, oh my goodness, is you don't open the lid. Now I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take this guy right here off. I'm just gonna set him right there. We're going to end on this. We're just going to end on that right there. Perfectly cooked through. Juicy as can be. Gosh. And oh, yes. What? Oh yes. <laughs> oh yes indeed. Back up. And we'll, uh, well, I need one of these. Thanks babe for coming in. Hi. There's Miss Shazzy. <laughs> Sharon's on camera. Hey, from my backyard to all of yours, we just want you to know, thank all of you so much. And I'm doing this for you, giving back to my sport. And I love archery. I love you guys. Make sure you spread the word because you guys are the only ones that are going to advertise it because I'm not going <laughs> to. See you guys later. Knock on.